Okay, we already did this presentation in the class before this one, so I'm going to present it again. Uh, yeah, we, but we didn't get to finish, so we're going to keep it concise. Um, so this is Sean. Uh, we both live in the Netherlands. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, the Netherlands, like uh, Milou, our former group member, also stated we are very known for our flowers and tulips. So as you can see, uh, if you go to... Um, a lot of spots, for example, we have uh, a garden in The Hague. It's very known for its flowers and tulips, so it's like a very big attraction. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, towards tourists, so if you ever want to visit the Netherlands, there's like a really big flower, some sort of attraction theme in The Hague, which you can visit. Um, the Netherlands are very known for its cows, so um, if you go in the Netherlands, wherever you go, you will always see like. Um, Yeah, like you see a lot of farmland with a lot of cows. So, um, Netherlands, yeah, like Dutch people, yeah, actually they do. They love to drink milk a lot, and um, the quality control. Because I did a, um, I did a supply chain uh, um, report on this one. Like the quality control in the Netherlands, they're very strict towards uh, milk. So uh, the milk can only can only contain a certain amount of bacteria because they they test the milk ev at every day or every week. So, um, yeah, we are very known for our cows and the milk. Um, we are also very known for our uh, windmills. They're used to, because my former group member, she's not here, she also stated, um, a lot of areas in the Netherlands, we're under like sea level. So in order to keep the Netherlands dry and the mainland protected, we have a lot of windmills, which helps uh, um, keeping the, yeah, pumping the w water. And we also, uh, the Netherlands are also very known for building dikes. Um, because in 1953, we had a very big uh, flood in Sealand. So since then, um, the Netherlands got very um, good in building dikes or they brought in the expertise. I believe in the States, they had uh, a problem with it as well. So that's why they hired Dutch people to come there and build the, the dikes for them. This is the hometown of Sean, is Groningen. I think maybe you can say something about it because you're so enthusiastic. So uh, we are very known for its milk. So as you know, um, cheese is m one of the components of cheese is milk. So the Dutch are very known for its cheese. Um, we have a lot of variations. We have uh, Gouda cheese. We have uh, Campina cheese. We have so many different cheese. And yeah, Leerdammer, Maasdammer, old, old Amsterdam. We have so many. So one of our biggest export products is cheese. And we are also very known for... Um, Patat, this is not French fries because French fri yeah fries are like French, but we are very known for patat. It's a bit more bigger and um, a bit more rougher, more crunchier, and yeah Dutch fries. And I have to agree before like the mayonnaise in the Netherlands is actually really good. It's like the mayonnaise really w one of the best mayonnaise uh, in the world in my opinion. And we are also very known for our Dutch team, our national team. They performed uh, really well in the, in the World Championships, in my opinion. And they should have won against Argentina, but it was like, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, this is our Dutch team. Um, we And we have with that the um, Dutch Lion. Yeah, Nederlands Lille. Okay, this we will skip because it was in the EU. I already um, introduced it. There it is, yeah. But yours not. Yours is from outside the EU. I think Professor won it. 
Um, wait, give me a second. Or else, or else I can explain everything again, doesn't matter. Yeah? I'll just do this. Okay. So it's not that important. I'll just start from there. In the Netherlands, it's like quite. I pay over 115 euros. Uh, before, I had like one of the highest um, health insurance because, like Sean stated, um, if you live in the Netherlands, doesn't matter if you work or not, you're obligated to have health insurance. It's uh, um, it's written by law that you should mm -hmm. have it. If you don't have it, you're gonna get a fine. So, euros. yeah, so you're gonna get a fine for it. So you have to have health insurance. Um, there are basically there are like three levels. You have the basic, medium, and highest. And before I had highest, but then I checked my uh, my policy and I checked for the things that I was covered. I didn't need it, so I changed it. Um, yeah, but with uh, extra uh, teeth, dentist uh, care. So maybe you can help me like pick one because yeah, I don't sure. have to do it now. 
because in the Netherlands we have a lot of different insurance companies, like a lot. So they offer different types of insurance uh, insurance coverage. So you just have to read the policy well and know what they um, can offer or know what they cover in case of yeah I liability. Just because it's legal in your country, that basic includes basic things. Check what basic means. Exactly, like. Teeth is not basic, apparently. Yeah, and then for every insurance um, um, policy, it's different, every yeah. insurance company, so you have to check it. Netherlands is like that, like. Really? Ah, it's covered in. Uh, Then you have you have around the same as in uh Then you have, I think, the same. If you live in Sweden and you're Swedish yeah. citizens, it's basically you know covered. But yes, let's go to how can I live there? Go. Okay, now if you're not from the US, right? So then you need more of a set and you can see this like you have some advice procedures. And then um that will include your work permit and your certificate of marriage setting. Okay. That will include your work permit, the Tabek settings for for Gunning. Um Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. So um, this procedure, um, like it can it can be put in motion by a sponsor or by your university, by your by your uh, employer or whoever, like any kind of sponsor. And then you need the approval of the IND, the Dutch Immigration Service, and this should take um, like it can take up to ninety days, but it shouldn't take more than ninety days. Um, uh, and then you collect your MVV from the Dutch consulate in your home country. Like the MVV is, you explain that. I don't know what the name is. What does it mean again? It's like a. It's it's like a. Um, it's also like a resident authorization. Authorization paper. for temporary stay. Yes, like yeah. that. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah, and then you make an appointment within three days at the IND desk for the, or within two weeks with the MVV, for the. Yeah, but you get like a residence permit card. Like you need like this the, the, this card that you have then, and then it's like it's like I don't know. You have you have like an ID card as a Dutch person, and then you'll have this card as as a foreigner in in that country. That will be like your ID card, so to say, so to speak. You don't have to take your um, passport with you all the time. That's kind of 
like the passport's big and if you lose it that's going to be a problem right so you better have this card with you yes then can you, oh yeah um oh yeah and your fingerprints are taken of course your fingerprints are taken like my are you pressing stuff the whole time Stop. Mm. okay so but um oh yeah and then you have to do exactly the same what i just said what also the european um Im immigrants have to do you have to register at the city hall you have to get your bsn number and you have to do all the same things that we also have to do just you have to do all of this before basically and um uh, yeah um okay then you have like these okay so you have the permits and they're valid for three years and then um, after that, you can change it into a free access permit for the Dutch labor market. So, um, like, so that means like for those first three years, you're like there if you're working there. So you're working for like some company or something, and then after that, like you can apply for any job you want, basically like that. And um, yes, please. Yes. So, I said that in the other class already. Like there's there's uh, there's one thing that can make it way easier for you. So now you're 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 you're, you're all students. So you're probably going to be highly skilled lab like highly skilled workers at some point because that's what you're working towards. So everything I've been talking about now is probably for some low skilled workers. Like something I don't know. Like uh, maybe a builder or something like that. Or maybe I don't know. Like some not so. Somebody who didn't study something, maybe. But now, if you're like a really skilled worker, like let's say an engineer or something, or a manager or something, and 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 some big company wants to have you working there for you, they don't want to wait for 90 days until you can come and blah 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 and go through all that. So that can all be sped up by a different procedure. If you have to do what you have to do. What? Uh. Uh. Yeah. You, yeah. They have to go to the expat center and do some paperwork there, and then. But you don't really have to do anything about that. Like it's not, nothing to do with you. The company will do that for you, and it, then you can basically just come. So, so all of the stuff I just said will probably <coughs> not apply for you, like to you. Yeah. Um, then you have a permanent residency and Dutch citizenship. So if you live in the Netherlands for five consecutive years, and um, you have a temporary resident permit plus a valid residence. Um, and you speak Dutch and you complete the civic integration exam so that shows that you speak Dutch blah 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 mm -hmm. and so on and some questions about the Netherlands I suppose then um, um, yeah then you can get the permanent residency and um, you can work in the Netherlands then without like a work permit or anything like you got this permanent residency and it's just like you can just move freely and also um, I'm pretty sure you can also go to other countries then but it's like basically as if you're like a European then yeah, like that. And then, um, so then if, um, yeah, after, this has to be renewed every five years, but like if you have a job and you're just like working in places and stuff like this, then like there should actually be no reason why that shouldn't be renewed. Like, I mean, like, unless you go rob a bank or do something crazy like that like if you're just like a normal person it's probably going to get renewed there's no re or or if we're not at war with your country or something like this you know like that should be renewed and then after that like you can get the dutch citizenship if you want to and um yeah and for that you'd have to have the permanent residency and you'd have to have lived in the netherlands for an uninterrupted period of five years and yes so much okay. yes okay.
skill set yeah. kind of. So if you're like a highly asked, if you if you have skills that are highly asked for, and where people not a lot of people have these skills, and you're like a genius in this area or something, then probably a company will not care about the fact that you don't speak their home country okay. or you speak English, and they will make it possible for you. Okay. They will give you an incentive to come there and make it like as pleasant as possible for you because you have something that they want, mm -hmm. basically. But if you have something that other people, if, if what you do and other people do that too, a lot of people, and they speak the, country, the language of the country, then why would they then take you if they could have it easier when they're kind of like not open to different languages? So basically what I'm saying is, for instance, if you, could, if you take Germany as an example, for instance, like in Germany, it's, it's some areas where they need people, like in the area of engineering, for instance, that's something that is highly sought after by Germans, right? Like okay. we have these companies, all these car companies and mm -hmm. stuff, and we have these... Yeah, definitely. Like, and you have like, and you have like uh, uh, skills that you don't have, and that somebody in Germany might not have, or you can teach German engineers something that they still like. If you have knowledge that they don't have, that you can transfer to them, then probably they'll still have you. Like, for instance, Germans will take like Indian engineers and stuff like that. Or in the area of IT, we have like in a lot of Indian people in Germany that have like skills that German people don't have because they focus on this in India but like in general if you want to work and live in Germany you're kind of like not really well off if you don't speak German that's going to be a bit of a problem and in France for instance too if you don't speak French that's kind of going to be a problem if you don't speak French like but in the Netherlands it's different like in the Netherlands if you don't speak Dutch they don't expect you to speak Dutch because who the hell speaks Dutch it's a really small country of 17 million people so they don't really expect you to learn their language if you're just going to be there for five years working there or something so y you see what I mean like so um, I would not, uh, I would not, um, I would not uh, give you the tip to think that you can go anywhere in Europe and just feel comfortable there with English because it's not the case. But some countries, especially also especially smaller countries where people know that their language is not like as w widely spoken, like um, I don't know, what's it like in Sweden? Like I could imagine. S s yeah, you, you, yeah, yes. So I could I don't know all Swedish people I met spoke really well English actually. Yeah, like like that maybe or then um, yeah, yeah, like like I've noticed like in in Scandinavian countries in general people's English level was pretty good. Like ev even I mean Finland the English level was also pretty good. Even though I don't know if I would advise people necessarily to go to. Anyway, but like, uh, then other countries like maybe um, um, Belgium, like, or maybe not the French part, but um, <laughs> like, um, then maybe, yeah, there's, there's different, you have to inform yourself on what the level of English in a country is, like I would say. Then obviously England, I speak English in England. Um, and then... So like to work in the Netherlands, like Sean just said. So that Germany, um, Germans, they put a lot of emphasis on uh, their degree, but in the Netherlands, it's 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 more a bit more of the opposite. Like, of course, a good degree is very important in the Netherlands, very important, but they also put emphasis on your work experience. Like, how how much did you experience before? What is your expertise? Are you good in this? And are you good in that? Teamwork, you know, do you have team spirit? So, besides the degree, you also should have a lot of practical experience. Okay really result oriented and another thing that's maybe nice to know about the Netherlands working hours are short <laughs> short working hours so none of this none of this this stupidness of like working from nine o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock at night we don't they don't do this kind of stuff because that would mean that you are not enjoying your life and Dutch people like to enjoy their life so working stops at I don't know five six seven o'clock at five if you could if we can make it five we'll make it five Monday mornings most places are not open. Most things open at one o'clock because that's basically weekend, you know. So, <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you and, and and that's that's comes that's from their work ethics because it's not like we don't they don't think like okay, you have to work now and you have to fill this time with work, this particular time with work. It's more like you have to get this and this and this and this done. If you get it done and if you're done at twelve, okay, go. 
you know it's like this so you want to get it done it's not about filling that time with stuff it's about being efficient being productive getting it done fast and it's not about you have to do a b c d e f to get there get there i don't care how get there it's like that so i like their work spirit as well it gives you a lot of free time A lot of tax. A lot of tax. Taxes a lot. I don't know about like you mean do you mean the VAT? Or or do you mean like taxes on salary? I don't know, it's like sales tax. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's kind of like I don't think it's that bad. But like the tax on you what you that earn is high. Like it's like I don't, okay, I'm probably exaggerating, but it's like 50% or something. You earn something, and like, yeah. But you earn a lot then. On the other hand, like I mean, if you can still, I mean, like comparison, you know, like it's high taxes, also high services. Is anybody interested in living in Europe? Is any, okay, who's interested in visiting Europe? Yay! Come to Europe. Come visit me. Okay. Who's interested in living in Europe? Like uh. <laughs> To make the presentation better. Is it because it's too far away, or the language, or English? But she's basically you can. You, are you talking about the English or the, the English or these other languages? Other languages. Right. Seriously, it's nice. I love it. You love it. Everybody um. loves it. <laughs> okay. She came to visit. She loved it. Anyway, so South Korea has a free trade agreement with the European Union. So if you're interested in like, you know, like Europe, maybe, you know, try to find like a Dutch company or some other European company in Korea, maybe, yeah, hook up. And then if you like it, then maybe you can, you know, go, go there and then, you know, see what it's like. Okay, I also got another email from a person who went to America. Okay, can I get a volunteer? Who hasn't spoken a lot yet? Let's get you and you, okay? This is a teacher, Miss Lee. Yay! Thank you, Dutch people. Okay, Sky, can they visit your can they can they visit your apartment too? Sorry, can they can they crash at your apartment too? Okay, so you can stay at Sean's or Sky's. You got a friend. Okay. Dear Professor E. Dear Professor E, I'm Yong Eun Kim. I'm a great Korean teacher at Penn University Prep, and this is my second year. I'm honored to share my story with you and your students. Uh, when did you go to the United States first? I went to Virginia Tech in Virginia as an exchange student in my senior year of college. This was the very first time to go to the United States and I stayed for a year. What, what motivated your movement to the United States? Sample students. I majored in both biology and English language and literature in Korea. And after graduation, I became an English and so science teacher in Korea. I always wanted to go back to the United States 
and I was lucky to be one of the teachers to join a teacher training program from Ministry of Education, South Korea. You can find a teacher training program Yebigusa Hewe Sinchul here at Jeonggu Hewe in Turn South. After a year of training, I achieved New Jersey teaching license for secondary schools as a science teacher. After one year at Virginia Tech, I always wanted to go back to the United States, but I didn't know how or when. I talked to a lot of people who have been to U.S. and also planning to go to U.S. to see what opportunities are there. The teacher training program for Ministry of Education was the opportunity I've been waiting for. I found about the program <coughs> just searching website with keyword teaching in U.S. Sometimes it just takes them that one click. Could you explain how you got the current pos position at the Democracy Prep? Through the government teaching training program I mentioned above, I went to New Jersey to attend school at Bloomfield College. Bloomfield College provided us with programs and classes that help us be qualified as a New Jersey State certifi Certified Teacher. I was lucky to be at first meeting Bloomfield College and Democracy Prep Head. In the meeting, I met the head of HR Dev Department, and a few weeks later, the school contacted me asking if I'm interested in a position as a Korean teacher. Even though I was getting ready to be a science teacher in New Jersey, I loved the school spirit and I decided to join the school as a Korean teacher. It took me over two months to go through several interviews and demo lessons and I was finally offered with a job. <coughs> That's a Korean language teacher. Okay, so she switched from being an English teacher to being a Korean teacher because, you know, as you can tell, her English is not that good. Okay, next. Can you come up? Okay, I'm going to ask the question because I actually emailed her all these questions. Okay? What are the main differences of workplace and working culture between the U.S. and Korea? Overall? Yeah, overall. You read the answer. Overall? Overall, people in the U.S. are honest about their thoughts and feelings. They know how to agree, with, agree to disagree and reserve conflict by having conversations. If there are problems, they bring them up and talk about it to solve them. For example, if I have an opinion that's different from the school principal, I am actually encouraged to tell him <laughs> my thought and he appreciates it. If he thinks it is reasonable, the schools make changes. Changes. I think him as my college, not my boss. Colleague, Co colleague not my boss. Mm -hmm. Though he sometimes makes decisions that I don't agree, it's always after discussion and if it could be rational behind. Age is not a very important factor. Factor as well. And my school principal and vice principal are both younger than me. People here are not afraid of making changes if they think it is it will bring benefit to the organization they belong. Stop. So it's very different from Korean school, right? Imagine if the principal is younger than you. Will that happen? No, it no. is impossible. impossible. Because this is actually a charter school. It's called Democracy Prep. You, you might have heard of it. The guy's uh, the guy's white. All the students are black or Hispanic, and they all have to learn Korean in Taekwondo, okay? Because he came to Korea for one year to become, to work as a Hakwan teacher, and he loved Korea, he loved this kind of education spirit, because, you know, they're always, Korean people are always <coughs> studying. So he said, wow, what can Americans be Korean? <laughs> so he went to New York, and he made all the black students learn Korean. And then all their test scores went up. <laughs> you understand? I guess it's like once you become Korean, your test scores go up. <laughs> anyway, that was his plan, strategy, and it plan and it worked. Anyway, so the principal is very young. Okay, so a lot of the principals of different charter schools are very young, and they're like they're kind of like colleagues, right? You can like you know, I don't if just if you if you disagree.
agree with me, it's not kumbang jjigya. It's you actually get this course feedback. Okay? So she really likes that about working in America. Okay, next. Overall, how much are you satisfied with your work and life in the U.S.? Uh-huh. I'm very... I'm very satisfied with my work and life in the U.S. I love school too. Though we have a lot of work and I love learning new things and meeting interesting people here. My dream came true because I didn't give up the dream. The opportunities came to me and I was just brave enough to take the chance and actually do it. I worked hard for it, but also I was very lucky. I am grateful for the experience I am having right now in, here in the US. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can call her or email her. Okay, she said, you know, call your students, please contact me. Okay, thank you. Then I guess we'll just have to be oral. Let's yeah. go one by one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just anything about education or living overseas, okay? Yeah, anybody, anybody can go first. Okay, ladies first. <coughs> Did you like the presentation? Yes. Okay. Any, do you have any thoughts? What did you like about it? I'm sorry, but I, I was late today, so I missed the half of the <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I learned, yeah. I can go to the Netherlands without speaking Dutch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But still... You will manage to speak English. Yeah, but I... Well, in the Netherlands, you know, smoking Mariana is legal. Smoking Mariana <laughs> is legal? Um, I don't know if I can live with that. They made a new rule, like, for tourists, like, for everyone who wants to buy uh, Mariana, you need a pass, but because the culture is so rooted in the coffee shops, um, a lot of people just go there without a pass and still they give you the supply what you want to buy. Is that that's the reason why you want to go or not want to go? Don't think every Dutch person like <laughs> smokes weed. No. <laughs> uh -uh. Why you Why you don't, don't have drugs in Korea, right? Like no, it's very very strict. Very strict. Yeah, it's very strict. Drugs are everywhere. Yeah, drugs are everywhere. I mean, it's yeah, of course, drugs are in every country. It's just hard to get here. <laughs> and we, you know, in your country, it's called just drugs, right? But in our country, it's called evil drugs. <laughs> yeah. The meaning of this word, yeah. The Maya. Yaki is drugs, Maya is bad, mm. evil, okay. Evil yeah. drugs, okay. So that, so is that a positive thing or negative thing about Netherlands? <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Doing drugs are not right, right? It's not right. Okay. It's not right. Well, then you can say coffee is a drug, but because it's socially accepted, coffee is a drug. I just had a point that maybe, I, well, I see it like this, like Koreans are so formal and squared, and but the drinking part, it's so different. It's like the escape. I don't know if they escape from the normal life or I don't know what happens, but they, yeah. <laughs> but they do drink a lot. You do drink a lot, the Koreans. Okay. So, then do you ins so you don't want to go to... So don't go, so you don't want to go to Netherlands, too many high people, but... How about many high people? How about, how about America? America's okay? American people, you drunk a lot too. So you, that means you're never gonna, you're never gonna stay, you're never gonna go out of Korea? <laughs> I, okay, if 
I have to live in another country, I think I would go um, for Asia. Where? Maybe Japan. Japan? If I have to choose okay. another country. Okay. Japan is my country. Sure. Because of the culture. Yeah, you look a little Japanese too. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, what's it? I think, uh, yeah, and also Japan has more than a million Korean residents. A million? Yes, more than a million. For me, it's like I would love to live in Tokyo. Ready. Say? Radiation and the bathroom That's why I like Japan. At least you won't be high in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like low and trying to protect yourself from the earthquake. I don't know. It's kind of interesting, like, you know, Korean people think living in Japan is very dangerous, but a lot of Japanese people think living in Korea is dangerous. Why is Korea dangerous for them? Because they I have... Uh, Korea? Yeah, because uh, they, they, uh, they have a pukdong, a puk, like, atomic bomb. How much is it? Wonja pukdong. Yeah, pukdong. Pukdong. They have atomic bomb. Where? In North Korea? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the whole country can... And, you know, they have students from Pus now, so they can develop even better bombs. Just like that South Koreans are used to the nuclear situation, we're not really afraid of the nuclear attack in real life, right? right. And Japanese are used to the natural disasters too. They don't really... Yeah, but the thing is like, on both situations... And they are really well trained about the situation, evacuation. When, when they have, you know, was it Chichun or earthquake? But Koreans will be really freaked out, and we're gonna be like. <laughs> I think <laughs> that will like hit Japan like we did in Indonesia. I don't think anything will uh, can protect them from it. You know what I mean? So natural disasters we don't have control of it. We don't know the magnitude. We don't know when it's gonna happen. So that's the crazy part. But natural disasters in Japan. And where where is they? The Netherlands? Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a safe country. It's like low, very low. Criminal rate is low. Good health care. Um, good pension. They really take care of you as a people. They really listen to their people. We have good democracy. Um, what else? You also have terrorist bombings in Europe. Yeah, but not not in the Netherlands. Not in the Netherlands. Maybe they maybe the country is so small. They skipped it. Um, um, about education, I think in public education there are lots of things that should be changing. Yeah, because uh, normally in high schools, peop students should sit in the same class and study and study and go back home at ten o'clock. Yeah, and as a as a person who has experienced that. I think it should change because there is no real life in high schools and when they graduate from the high school, we don't know how to play uh, because our life was such like that. Yeah. Did you see the benefit of it? You know, you were tired and uh, working until 10 in the night, but you were like, yeah, this is worth it because in three years I'm going to be in the one of the best universities so someday I'll be successful or something or you, you were like mad at it I, I came to uh, Hanyang University that is called good in Korea uh -huh. and but um, I thought that when I was studying in the high school, I thought that my life will change when I go to university. But there are still so many homeworks and so many things to do. And when I play, I should think about the homeworks. 
even when I'm playing. So I think not many things have changed, though I graduated from the high school. And yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe the degree of the will be different from the character of the people. But yeah, in my in my uh, experience, it was like. <laughs> what I was doing in high school. Actually, I I didn't study really hard in high school. First year and second year, I was like, okay, this is my, I'm a teenager, and I'm not going to have this time back, Then I have to enjoy this time as much as I can. And I was just, I, I always tried to hang out with my friends as much as possible. And in the last year in my high school, I decided to study. If I miss this time and then I have to study again after I graduate, <laughs> I graduate high school, I didn't w want to do that. And that was my choice to study. And that's, yeah, this was my choice to be here. If all you do is study, how come your face looks so good? You know, like Korean women, they ha they have really good face, skin. Uh, yeah. 공부만 하면, if all you do is study, it, it becomes chic chic <laughs> <laughs> the, Yeah, the last year in my high school, I had a lot of pimples and. I <laughs> I burned them. <laughs> like like the nuclear bomb. That's fine. Uh, that's interesting. So, but education was more relaxing for you for you guys in Mexico. Yeah. You like college life is good. Yeah, we have like the. Uh, we uh, the thing is like we've grown in a different society so we know like when you have free time and when you have to study but yeah it's a lot different than than here my high school was like totally yeah yeah of course that's interesting how come you, you you feel like you have to work all the time at university is it because the professors give you a lot of homework Not just about the homeworks of universities, but we should do something like volunteering work. It's it's a good work, but maybe not every people will do the volunteer work with just with the only with a kind mind, you know. Yes, a little bit. There's meaning of the spec, and and there's something like internship and. And another thing like Kumojan and there are so many things that is required to go to another step after the university in Korea and it's a little bit hard to erase those things from my mind when um, yeah. yeah yeah lots of worries really <laughs> Yeah. The study that I'm studying is called um, IBMS, like International Business and Management Studies. Uh, my study is considered one of the toughest studies that you can get at a, um, a university level. So um, one of my professor also stated, one of my mentors, she said, if you have free time, then there's something wrong because you shouldn't have any free time uh, when you're studying IBMS. So the first two, the first two years, now let's say the first, the first year, they're gonna like give you a lot of work, and they're gonna they're gonna see like how many the strong will survive, like how many will like um, stay behind. Yeah. So, a lot of S yeah. 
So the first, uh, the first year, a lot of students, they dropped out because they couldn't handle it anymore or they just didn't have enough credits. So I think uh, a couple of years back, I think from 100 students from uh, IBMS who uh, participated in the study, I think only like 20 or 25% uh, got left. Okay. The rest didn't make it or they failed it. And they're really strict in that. You need to have that amount of credits or else you cannot go to the second year or your sophomore year or whatever. So uh, yeah, they're kind of strict in that. And um, especially for people who have a part-time job, like for example, for myself, um, like my parents, they want to like help me, but for me, so I don't want to accept it. So um, I had a part-time job besides my study. So I guess my question is, like, do you worry all the time, like these guys, or do you just focus on No, I focus on my future. I don't really worry. Because if you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing, then know, then get to know it. Like, that's what I say. Like, know what you want to do in life. If you're passionate about something, follow it. That's the most important thing. Don't do it because you have to do it. A lot of people do their internship because they have to do it. You know, oh, I worry because or else I will make it in that amount of year or I will have to. No, do it because you want to do it. And you will see automatically you will draw the people towards you that you want to keep close by or you're going to network, you're going to know those people or those people know those people. So if you do the stuff that you love, it will, it will show in your work as well. So don't, don't, like, don't really worry about it. If you have a question, get the mic. <laughs> what, what happens if a Korean guy uh, decides to drop out of college? Like, what is the expectation? Or what happens if you quit college, you drop out of college? waste your time <laughs> and money <laughs> and energy <laughs> for nothing. What if your boyfriend drops out? Angry at him or supportive? I actually I was thinking about dropping out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, af after I ju first, I just wanted to take a break, and I happened to go to uh, other countries like America, Japan, and China, and I started uh, to think like I I got a chance to live in Japan or China. Then I was like, what is good to graduate if I have to live in another country? Who's gonna Who's gonna you know, no one, yeah, I was gonna care. No one knows Hanyang University in Japan or China um, unless I explain them. You know what? Actually, my college is pretty good. <laughs> it's like number five in Korea. And they're like, we don't care. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> I have to, I had to come back to Korea somehow. <laughs> now I have nothing to do. Then to survive in Korea, I have to graduate. So at first you, as I hear it, right, like you went to other countries and then you were like, yeah, they never heard about it, so why should I do it? So your mindset was at first more like towards others, how others perceive you or how others think you think about you, but now you're different. Now you're like, I'm doing it for myself. Well, in Korea, uh, if I speak to Korean people, if I tell them I go to Hanyang University, then they think I'm a well-educated person. But in there, I'm just an idiot <laughs> who doesn't speak Japanese or Chinese well. And yeah. Networking and knowing the right people is very important. It's just not in the Netherlands. It's actually overall. That's why my mentors and my professors, they really like um, emphasize the importance of LinkedIn. That's why I have a LinkedIn account. That's how I got connected to one of uh, a businesswoman that really inspires me, Karen Civil. So she accepted me. So I was like, wow. So 
during your education because here i see like in asia it's more like um yeah like go to the best university or get a very good degree but then afterwards they they don't know how to apply it that's what i see like they don't really know like the how how the real world like the business environment or whatever works so in in the west maybe in the netherlands is quite different they emphasize that a lot as well like know the right people uh, a lot of practical stuff what we have so yeah that's quite important as well Miss Lee is saying that is, I uh, miss you. Okay, I know. You know, I, I only. I know you love me. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you know that. But, but I think Miss Yoon's point is that all her connections and her status comes from Hanyang University, and that only works in Korea, right? Because if she goes to Netherlands, she doesn't know anybody. She doesn't know the language. She doesn't have these kind of connections because you stress these connections. Yeah. So I guess in your case, you have to kind of start in Korea and then move up the ladder, and then you can go to uh, Europe or America. Which is all in your hands. For example, if you look at me, there's like a lot of people who are millionaires. Who made it without a degree. Like they never went to college. How did they do it? You know what I mean? They didn't do it by sitting still. No, they, they did it because of their work ethic. They just got out in the world, get to know people, travel, you know, and that's how you're going to make it. So a degree, you have... What they teach you, like in the Netherlands, is of course education is very important. You know what I mean? Education is should be one of the foundations of your life, of what you should achieve. But besides that, I wanted to say. Um, here I see here it's more, it's like oh, if I have a good degree, it's everything for me. But in the Netherlands, it's like a good education, a diploma will give you just a good head start in life, but it won't determine everything in your life. You know what I mean? So that that's maybe like the difference between like the Western, or at least how the Netherlands think, and maybe Koreans think. Anyway, 나중에 after you get job in a company, if you have chance, do you want to go to America or Europe, like Miss Kim? Oh my God! You mean leaving another country? Yeah. 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 I will not. I will stay in Korea maybe because I have family and friends and in here who a boyfriend and another of my high school friends and yeah. Maybe they will. It will be just for me. They want. They don't. They will not want to live in other country because everything is different. Uh huh. And I don't want to make them move because of me. Uh -huh. yeah. Actually, boyfriend makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I can tell. Give me like a give a American boyfriend, you'd be more likely to go to America. <laughs> or a Dutch boyfriend or a Mexican boyfriend. I noticed that. Yeah. And also, the second thing I noticed is that I had a choice between teaching at Hanyang or Bukang Deakbyo. Job stability and less money, 
position, I think I have one quest, you know, that's why I always get, you know, hurry in the fiddle.